Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Jessica with the little white door and in this video I will be sharing with you how to style a table for the holidays. I will be sharing with you some tips, some tricks for styling and I asked you earlier to let me know whether you wanted to see a recipe for my special holiday drink or my Italian tiramisu and it was almost a tie but you guys decided that you want to see tiramisu. So we are going to also go ahead and do that as well. Before we jump into the video make sure to take a look at the description box because I will be leaving all the links for all the items that I've used not only for the recipe but also on my table and yeah without further ado ring the bell subscribe leave me a comment I love absolutely love to read you all guys it really means the world to me so please keep it going and yeah let's jump into the video Okay, so we're in the kitchen, but before we begin, I'm gonna give a little clean, and in the meantime, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about the origin of tiramisu. The origin of tiramisu is quite mysterious, but it looks like the name was given by the Venetian courtesans who called it tiramisu, <laughs> which means pick me up. The fun and easy name to remember was given because it was believed that the delicious dessert had aphrodisiac properties and was a great way to awake so to speak, the man before a date. So this recipe is going to be suitable for a batch that serves four to six people. But if you need more, you just have to double all the ingredients. You're going to need two eggs, 12 ounces of mascarpone cheese, Italian Savoyardi, better known as ladies fingers, half a cup of sugar, rum extract, and espresso coffee. No instant coffee make a good pot of coffee of the real deal one and make it strong. Then you're going to grab two mixing bowls, a large and a medium size, and you will be cracking the eggs, separating the white from the yolk, letting the white fall into the smaller bowl. Once you're done, it's time to take your mixer and whip the egg white until you get a dense, foamy consistency. I like to start with a slower setting and increase the whipping force of the mixer as the consistency gets more dense. It usually takes about 2 minutes and honestly, you may be able to get away using a fork or a manual whisk if you don't have a mixer, but you just might have to work a little bit more energetically. You know you did a great job when if you flip the bowl with the beaten egg white upside down, it will not fall out, out of it. <laughs> Leave the bowl to the side and now add the sugar to the bowl with the yolk. Then mix together with your mixer, starting again with a low setting and increasing slowly as the two ingredients combine. The orange color of the yolk is slowly going to turn a much lighter yellow and that's when you know you did a great job. It's now time to add the mascarpone and you just want to be careful because the mascarpone in contact with the egg yolk is going to be slippery and you don't want to have it fly across the room. So start again with a low setting and keep mixing for about 2-3 minutes until you obtain a very smooth and dense creamy consistency. Now add the previously whisked egg white combine and then it's time to add the rum extract. You can be fine with 3-4 drops but you obviously can add as much as you want. At last you're going to mix it all and it's time to plate. Typically you can serve tiramisu in a rectangular pan, but here I wanted to be fancy for my Christmas party and I decided to work with mono portions. I found these gorgeous glasses at Ikea and I knew exactly what I was going to use them for, so here I am. Lay out all of the ingredients and prepare your lettuce fingers in whichever serving bowl you are going to use, then soak them in coffee. The amount of coffee is totally personal and keep in mind that ladies fingers absorb a lot of liquid so the more coffee you pour, the more soggy they will be in the end. 
After that, you can add your previously made cream and you don't need to use a sucker posh for this. You can easily just use a spoon. But here I am showing you my process and then you're going to repeat the steps for as long as you have depth in your serving pan. Once you reach the top, just sprinkle dark chocolate powder on it and you're done. Alright, so obviously if you clicked on this video, you understand the importance of styling a table and how much that can set the tone of the gathering that you're hosting. In this video, I am going to show you an informal styling. And there are four more ways that we could style our table otherwise, and those will be basic, formal, buffet style, and five meal courses. I chose to show you an informal table because it's one of the most common ways to style a table, especially when you have family gathering or a friends gathering, and it just makes the table a little bit more elevated than just styling it basically, and it's still very relaxed and fun. There are several styling rules that we can follow to style our table, and obviously when you know them, you can break them if you want. However, I am gonna share with you my favorite ones. Number one is do more with less. I am someone that loves very abundant tables. So you wanna keep your tablescape interesting without overly crowded it with elements and you know the core pieces because at the end of the day we are dressing up the table so that we can enjoy the meal that we are about to have. The second styling rule for me is choose function over style. Obviously I'm someone that loves styling and the core and all the pretty things. However, when we're eating, we need to have, for example, flatware that it's functional. I understand that there are a lot of styles out there that are really beautiful, sleek, but sometimes those can be difficult to handle and they just make us tired. And really, who doesn't want to get tired eating all the delicious meals that we have for Christmas and all the holidays, you know? So yeah, choose always function over style you can get cute stuff that are still very functional the third styling rule that for me is very essential is don't forget the lighting i know this is gonna sound a little bit over the top but lighting that set a mood is important so think about how you're going to light up your dinner or your gathering or whatever because that's going to change very much the tone and the atmosphere of the gathering that you're hosting. Number four is choose your colors. So I know that we can be very inspired by adding a lot of different colors, especially around the holidays. However, I strongly recommend you to choose one color that is your main color throughout the table. And maybe if you really want to, another one that can be used as an accent. If you start putting together too many colors, then your table is going to to look a little bit cluttered and we're gonna try to avoid that as much as possible number five is layering you want to layer as much as possible because when you create layers on your table then you're creating depth and so the eye of the person sitting at the table with you is actually enjoying a variety of items to look at it just makes the table more interesting more you know warming welcoming rather than a couple of plates just placed on the table without really any visual interest. I'm talking about heights as well. So play with the variety of items that you're placing, you know, in the center of the table as if you wanted to create some sort of a visual wave so that people can actually look at something that has lower heights, very high, very high heights. So yeah, just keep in mind that. The last one for me is texture make sure that you're mixing them because it is very easy to fall for i love gold and i want to put a lot of gold everywhere but if you go for that then make sure that your gold are all the same say you choose brass and then you have brass flatware and maybe brass napkins holders and they're not the same brass then you're gonna be in trouble because the look is going to feel a little bit cheaper rather than elevated 
So in my personal suggestion, add texture that add warmth and cold and a little bit more of masculinity and femininity to your table so that you're mixing together different items that tell a story, make the table interesting and just feel a little bit more cozy rather than a little bit of a mixture of something just because you love it. Start decorating any table from the center. In here I am styling a burgundy runner on top of which I am placing a faux cedar garland. You guessed it, my two colors of choice for the table are going to be green and burgundy. I have a pretty neutral dining room, so these two colors are actually going to cozy up the space a little bit. Now that I have the center of the table defined, I am moving on to the side, starting with the chargers that will ground the eye and serve as a reference for the placement of the plates. I went with these gorgeous woven round ones because I love the natural element that they bring and the warmth of the texture that is a nice contrast with the ceramic of the plates. In a formal table, the napkins should be placed to the left side of the plate, However, it is also accepted to have it folded on top of the salad plate. I grabbed these very fine and simple brass holders and used them to create a bow with the napkin and that is a very simple and super cute way to add a detail of cuteness and interest to your table. I love brass and I would have likely wanted to use flatware in brass, however, I opted for a gun metal, almost black, sterling silver style to avoid clashing with the brass color of the napkins holders. Then I added a wine glass and a water glass for each plate and went ahead to finish decorating the table. I placed taper candles on various candle holders heights and created a high-low composition. And finally, because I love adding fruits to any floral or greenery arrangement, I added pomegranate and chestnuts, which marry perfectly the color scheme that I have going on. The result is simple, warm, cozy, clean, and yet is simultaneously lush and abundant, creating the perfect gathering to enjoy a holiday meal. All right, you guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm definitely enjoying this one. Thank you so much for all of your presents. I really, really appreciate it. This year, you put the Mary in my Christmas and I am the most grateful. So I wish you all the happiest of the holidays. Make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, leave me a comment so that I can see you again next year, which is just in a few days. And yeah, I will see you in my next one. Bye, you guys. La 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 uh, This is so good mm -hmm. The coffee Amazing